Hi, FI Europeans. Have you ever asked yourself how life would be if you haven't chosen a certain life path? If you would have studied something different? If you would have changed your job earlier? If your husband had taken more parental leave and you could have better accelerated your career? While you cannot change the past without a time machine, you might want to go into a new direction in the present or future. Today I talk about reversing wrong life decisions with Silke Rosenbusch and she had a tough time being an actor and was switching to a career in medicine. She's also side hustling since a decade. And now she's focusing family plans in a different way. I hope you enjoy this case study with Silke today. And sorry for the occasional background noise, there was a film team in my little studio while I recorded the episode. More on that soon. Hello everybody to another episode of the FI Europe podcast. Um, today with me is, uh, is Silke Rosenbusch. Um, I, um, maybe you can just uh, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your age and maybe um, who you're living with. And then um, I will also say a couple of words from my side. Hello, Matthias. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Silke Rosenbusch. I'm 45 years old. Uh, I live with my cat, Romeo who's almost 20 years old. Mm. And uh, yeah. <laughs> your, your cat is 20 years old. How old are you again? Uh, am I allowed to ask you how old you are? You are allowed. 45 years old. 45 years. Uh, cool. Then you are slightly older than, than, than me, although I also, I'm also um, nearly 40. Um, cool. And um, maybe just to introduce yourself, um, my, my wife um, has seen you uh, at the minimal uh, meet up in, in Cologne and mm -hmm. she proposed that we maybe um, yeah record an episode together um, so um, why have you why did you join the, the minimalismus meetup in the first <laughs> place because I, I wanted to meet some like-minded people usually um, I've been studying medicine for the past like 10 years or so and um, doctors or medical students are not interested not I don't want to judge, but most of them are not that much interested in alternative um, living ways, like, like for example, minimalism or zero waste or uh, healthy nutrition or uh, gardening or changing the, the, the climate or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to meet some like-minded people. So I... Googled minimalism meetups in Cologne and uh, went there and uh, your wife was there. <laughs> <laughs> My wife was there. So uh, how long is that? Uh, um, how long ago uh, did you start going there? Four years, I Four guess. Years. Your daughter is two and a half years old and maybe it's five years. Because last time I saw her, she was like a newborn, like three, three four months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time's flying, I would say. Mm -hmm. So and, and today I, I, my, I was thinking... Um, Because um, my wife was also telling me about your life path, that it uh, would be a cool topic to talk about how you can uh, re reverse um, wrong in yeah in Gänsefüßchen, <laughs> how you can <laughs> how you can reverse uh, wrong life choices um, or life choices that you may yeah how how you can give your life life a different twist if you're not satisfied mm -hmm. and what that means and for for the rest of your life and uh, for the other stages that are following. So, and what impact that has. Uh, and that's why I'm interested in uh, talking uh, about it with you. So um, that's why I maybe start with your, with your studying, because I understood that um, it all started kind of with studying art, or you have been an actress. actress. Mm -hmm. yep. um, can you tell us a little bit why you became an actress in the first place? <laughs> I have to go deep down into Sigmund Freud psychology. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I, I'm the firstborn daughter of my parents. I grew up in a small, very small um, town, 6,000 inhabitants in Lower Saxony. And I have a sister who's five years younger than me. And uh, when she was born, she was already sick. Mm -hmm. She had uh, atopic dermatitis and asthma. And my mother, who was a nurse, always took care of my sister and kind of neg neglected me. And mm -hmm. I never felt seen. So that is what I know in retrospect. I did not know that back then. So no. I wanted to be seen. I wanted my, <laughs> my feelings to be recognized. And I spent too much time in front of the television. So I figured kind of that would be a good idea to, to be seen 
to be applauded, to 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 express myself, and to to finally get some recognition, kind of like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So I decided to become an actress. Mm-hmm. That's when I moved to Cologne. I uh, went to a private acting school for four years, uh, and I was done finished that when I was like twenty five, mm-hmm. I think. And then I wanted to start my career, <laughs> become famous, lo- make lots of money, and go to Hollywood. Yeah, sure. And that did not work out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what happened instead? So you, you learned all the things you need to learn in um, in the university, and then you 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 entered the job market. Um, as a freelancer, I guess. Um, as a freelancer, that was in 2001. Mm-hmm. And the economy was not doing very good. Mm-hmm. Elf Media, which was a big production company in Germany, mm. um, went bankrupt. And uh, the television stations started to produce more uh, cheap, <laughs> cheap entertaining cheap productions. Yeah. Productions like Big Brother came out back then. So they they suddenly decided, oh, we don't need actors for that. They are way too expensive. You can just hire people from the street, just film that, and everything will be fine. People don't need um, um, like quality entertainment. They just want to, you know, have yeah. that TV on while they are um, doing whatever housework. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I also watched uh, Big Brother. It was really entertaining for the first, first couple of <laughs> first couple of episodes. But uh, then, yeah, I stopped. And um, but there there must be also other productions um, where you could join. But I think in, I guess in the first, if you don't have a name, um, it's really hard to get the yeah. first contracts uh, and so on, the first gigs. And um, so, when how how long did you try to to get some yeah become become an actor? Basically for 10 years, mm-hmm. right after acting school, I did some um, touring uh, with a production um, for schools that mm-hmm. was against uh, racism and um, violence for a kids theater that I did for one and a half years and we were touring mm-hmm. all of Germany. And uh, after that, I tried to get whatever work I could get, no, no matter how low the quality. Yeah. <laughs> if it was paid, but, but some stuff wasn't even paid. So where you, you mm. practice for six weeks and then you only get paid for the shows that you do, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But you need something for your um, show reel and you need something for your, um, um, what's that called? The Vita? Portfolio or Portfolio for your CV, exactly. Vita, yeah. And then you need to kind of break into the business at least as a woman, until you're like 30. Mm. <laughs> that didn't mm-hmm. happen. And um, so one day I decided to do something different. And uh, you, you you also mentioned that you cannot really, uh, as we talked before the interview, um, that there's also a lot of competition and the, yeah. um, the directors, they are choosing, they already have something in their mind uh, who they want for their production. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's really frustrating about being an actor or an actress that you cannot simply put in the work, mm. work hard, <laughs> <laughs> be perfect at your craft and be successful. That won't mm. work because there's so many other things that um, decide if you get a job mm-hmm. next to if you're a good actor or actress. Somebody has a picture um, of the character in their mind and they yeah. want somebody who looks like that. You had um, this opera singer on your podcast the other day. Mm-hmm. And with opera, that's totally different. Nobody cares how you look. <laughs> you just get your custom and your wig and your makeup yeah. and everything. you can look old or young or whatever. And for actors, it's like the typecast. Uh, cool. Um, so, so then you should become a singer. An opera singer. <laughs> yeah, I thought about that. <laughs> I've been <sitting laughs> lessons for like six, six years or so. But uh, right now, I'm actually glad that I'm a doctor <laughs> during yeah, yeah. the pandemic and not in the arts. Yeah, let, let's talk about that also in a couple of seconds. But isn't that isn't that ungerecht? What is ungerecht in unfair. English? Isn't that unfair that that people who want to uh, who study art, who want to express yourself, who want to yeah, you are not a programmer or a manager. Uh, are, have such a low um, working conditions and such a terrible and competitive market. 
it's unfair, but it's your decision what you decide to become. Yeah. Everybody tells you when you want to become an actress, that's a starving art. You should not do that. You won't have any money. <laughs> if you decide to go against that, <laughs> I, I also uh, wanted to become a, uh, I wanted to work in media and become a director mm -hmm. uh, to, to, to record movies. Uh, but uh, I, I also was, um, there was a test um, in, in one university at, in Berlin to become a director. And uh, there were 400 participants and 40, 25 places. And I failed basically. So I couldn't become a director. There are uh, more schools, you know. You That's can why. go to every school and apply like three times. That's what people who want to become actors do. And then ah. finally, they get accepted to one school or they join a private school or they don't care. Oh, it's that's a, my, it's a numbers game. Yeah, I I just uh, have chosen another university. And my mm -hmm. father also told me it might be good to go into the IT direction and uh, become business informatic, uh, study business informatics. And then... I recognized I could also as in business informatics can, can do something with media because there was a new thing called multimedia that was kind of like TV just in the internet. Uh, but in the end, I, I did the boring stuff. Um, <laughs> but you have more money now than I do, I suppose. Uh, I guess, but you're, you're studying medicine, so I think it will work I out for you. <laughs> and um, how would you say, can you be successful um, if you work in, in arts or in the... Yeah, in the in the field of arts, becoming an uh, act, actor or what what else can you do? Uh, like, um, yeah, so, sociologist. <laughs> or all these, you know, all these non-technical um, fields. How how can you be successful there? Is it is it is it possible or not? I mean, there are some, there are some famous uh, people. Arts, arts is a is a matter of luck. You have to be vitamin B. You have to be in the right place at the right time with the right mm -hmm. person, and then you might get lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, that's um, yeah. that's from a statistical point of view, yeah. uh, not not my cup of tea, <laughs> as I'm very uh, risk averse. Mm -hmm. um, I would say other people not. Um, and another question is. Um, So you worked 10 years as a freelance actor. How yeah. was, uh, when the, was the, the, the point uh, where you said, okay, I have to stop that. I have to quit that after 10 years. Maybe it was such a pain. What was the situation that was the, the tipping point uh, where you decided to, to move in another direction? I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why it happened when it happened, but of course I was frustrated before. Because because I never had any money, I could never go on vacations. I could not. I did not have those like uh, one thousand Deutsche Marks or euros mm -hmm. in my account for an emergency fund. Nothing. <laughs> There was no reserve. Um, and at the worst time, I got um, evicted from my apartment. Mm -hmm. Even that that what, but that was five years before I <laughs> before I decided to do something else. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Some some months on the 26th, I did not know where where to get the rent from for the next first. That was terrible. It was stress. It was straining. It was mm. always you were always worried about money. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, when I actually decided to <laughs> that I have to do something else was when I was like 32. Mm. Um, I did not want to go on living on a thousand euros for the rest of my life mm. and i did not did, did know it was not going to get better because even actors that do have work that are uh, employed by a local theater mm. and are have been there for 30 years and are 60 years old they only make like 1600 euros uh after taxes a month That's that's a lot if you if you live in in, in south of europe or in east europe <laughs> <laughs> no yeah No, it's, it's yeah. I think yeah. also in Germany or in Central Europe, there are people who are, who earn that amount of money. But yeah. It, yeah, you always have a feeling, I guess, of scarcity if you're not used to it, and if you if you dream of something different, then there's always a scarcity feeling. And yeah, you're you're afraid uh, how the next month, uh, months, couple of weeks look like. So it's not it's not a great feeling not not to be able to go into vacation or thinking about kids. Uh, uh, founding family and so on. So, um, and, and how did you, 
how did you then um decided uh, to study medicine so how did you select your um, your future profession um that was uh, most of it was actually for my stomach <laughs> <laughs> for my brains so i had to go back to school because i needed to get the the abitur mm -hmm. uh, i only had the the, the lower to say it in german it's the fachabitur Fach which is like you can go to a Fach university, but not to the real university. And everything I wanted to study what needed a real university a degree. I think Abitur um, is, is in English. Um school leaving examination in Germany. So there is no real word. So but if you um if you want to study, you usually usually do the Abitur, so the 13 years or 12 years. And if you want to Uh, become a plumber or if you want to um, do the gardens um, then it's okay to study uh, to to go to school like 10 years yep. i don't know i don't know i was kind of like that 13 years um well, okay I needed, cool i needed to get that degree first so mm. i went to the, the um um the, the <laughs> another another word missing abendschule is, what is go to school in the evening There's a word for that. Really? Yeah, but that's what I did. Um, and I got that. It, it was part-time online, part-time at school. Uh, yeah. And then I got that degree. But just be, just shortly before I got the degree, it looked like it was going to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. So I decided, okay, if I get a degree that good, then I might as well study medicine. Because <laughs> before that, I started to go back to school in 2011. But in 2009, I started my blog. Mm -hmm. um back on blogger where i uh, wrote about uh nutrition uh mm -hmm. healthy eating uh veganism raw veganism back then even mm -hmm. and uh i i just wanted to know what the truth is about nutrition and about disease because mm -hmm. everything on the internet seems to contradict each other like the, the low carb the high carb the the raw vegan the regular vegan the plant based the Keto diet, the paleo diet, all that kind of stuff. Everything is contradicting each other. I wanted to know what the truth is. And if I knew what, what the truth is, I could use that knowledge to treat people. That's why I did not go and study nutrition, but medicine. And um, yeah. And um, okay, then, then you had, you had yeah, you, it, it's a personal topic from yourself that you, that you wanted to... Mm -hmm. Uh, learn about uh, nutrition, but you could also um, study uh, nutrition and not medicine. Exactly. It would be easier. It but... would be easier. It would be shorter. Uh, you would make less money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, so so that's what happened. It it just and after that, um, in, in acting, everything was always so hard. Hmm. Like I failed and failed and failed. In 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 medicine, um, things kind of went smoother. They were still hard. But mm. I did not fail as often. Yeah. Somehow. It's strange, yeah. So as, as if it's kind of my destiny, it feels like more than active. I, I could imagine that I would fail in medicine um, also very often uh, because I also failed in, in mathematics oh. uh, <laughs> sometimes. Um, but in, in the end, I got a, a good mark, but uh, before not. So I had to do an extra round uh, for that. Um, so I would, I would. I consider to stay away from from medicine. I also had not the the top uh, result in school. So I guess maybe like four years later, if I would uh, do the the final school um, um, abitur, if I would do it later, maybe I'm better because I know more. You know, if you okay. yeah. So um, that would be my. I, I picked the the subjects that I already knew, like everything about, which was English and German mm -hmm. were the majors. <laughs> and philosophy. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, of course, math you have to because you have to have a, a science in there. Mm -hmm. And was the main focus or the main filter for uh, for for studying medicine the money that you have more money? Because no, it no. was just it was the knowledge about health, about nutrition, and how you can really preserve your health, mm -hmm. and how you can get well when you have like then degenerative diseases or whatever yeah and i i could imagine if you if you kind of broke after become becoming an actor or actress um you kind of broke start studying medicine how do you finance it i mean oh we're in germany there's BAföG. ah cool you got some money 
That's yeah. the nice thing about Europe that you get a exactly. little bit of money, which is it is a loan, but at least you can you can study yeah. and it's not high interest. So rates. they paid me seven hundred and thirty euros, I think, for six years and three months. Mm -hmm. It should be something about fifty thousand euros. Yeah, I guess, and I only have to repay ten thousand. And as an actress, nobody would have given me any money. No yeah. bank. <laughs> Maybe not even some some private lenders or credit sharks. <laughs> Nobody would have given me money. But I got that that degree that said 1.2 mm. as the, the, the entrance into the university. That's, that's a, because I think I could imagine that if you if you kind of already uh, have been an act, actress and so on, that you later in your life, how, how old have you been study, uh, starting with medicine? 35. 35. So I would, I could imagine that, the, that you don't, you're not financed by the, by the governments if you're 35 and start studying then, but That's, there's rules about that too. You have to get your degrees, your Abitur mm -hmm. after you're 30 to mm -hmm. get BAFREP from the state. If you're over 40, you won't mm -hmm. get it at all. And if you've gotten it before you got 30, you won't get it <laughs> when you're over 30. So I got the degree. Um, just before I started studying medicine and I, I needed to start right after the degree, hmm. I got the degree to, to get the buffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if you, if you, if you uh, recognize that you're in the wrong, uh, business or in the wrong, um, field industry after you're 40, then you're doomed because you're not getting any money. Any work. Start. Yeah. But it, I mean, imagine you have to working and studying medicine. That's hard, I guess. I had a at at, at the, the at school that I wanted mm -hmm. to get the degree. I had a um, um, <laughs> a midschüler, a mm -hmm. fellow fellow pupil fellow, that was yeah. over forty and wanted to study law, and mm -hmm. she did that. She could not get any BAföG, but she she made money. Cool. Maybe she had some savings. I don't know. I did not have mm. any, so I, I don't know how I would have done it. Cool. And um, so, and you also on the site, you also had your blog, and you were writing about the nutrition topics. Uh, did did you make any money with that? A little, your... <laughs> A little very little. Okay. <laughs> I started in two thousand nine, mm. and my first AdSense mm. revenue was like I don't know. It, it took one and a half years when it, until mm -hmm. I get 70 euros or so. I don't know. And, and your YouTube channel, you started also a YouTube channel and a blog I, I've seen in the internet. Uh -huh. And you have like five, uh, more than 5,000 subscribers. And how many videos did you uh, record then since then? I don't know. <laughs> a lot. So I, because I recognize that you... Only 5,000 subscribers. I, I recognize that you... That you um, You, you recorded a lot uh, for, for a couple of weeks. So every day, basically, you yeah. recorded TV. How yeah. can you do that? How can you record? Uh... I have no idea. I, I was asked that <laughs> at, the, at the minimalist meetup, from yeah. the guy who organized it. How do you do that? Make a video every day? And I said, I have no freaking idea. I just wake up. And the most interesting thing about my day mm. or whatever what's on my mind i make a video about it <laughs> uh, yeah but that's for for me it would be difficult i would need to write down a couple of things i need to record it um several times um so it's really good maybe because you have been an actress that you that you're able to um yeah kind of be a one to uh, or record just one shot 15 20 minutes and you don't need to record and edit anything again Also, I'm not. I'm absolutely not a perfectionist. Because when I was at, in, in acting school, I read this book, uh, The Artist's Way, mm -hmm. by Julia Cameron, mm -hmm. and uh, she says something interesting. She used to be Martin Scorsese's wife, and she's mm -hmm. a, a filmmaker and a, a um, screenwriter also. And she says that people who want to do art or yeah. want to make a film, they usually compare themselves with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And not with George Lucas's first film. Mm -hmm. And then they think they are too bad and they don't dare to make art at all. And this perfectionism I got rid of like 20 years ago. <laughs> so yeah. whatever I do is fine. I don't need to be perfect. 80% is way enough. 
Eighty percent is very enough. Yeah. Otherwise, you also I have two kids, so I, I only can do eighty percent. So exactly. I, have no, <laughs> I have no time for more. Yeah. Um, and now, um, it, 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 having studied medicine, I, th I understood that you're finished now with, with studying. I finished. Uh, when was that? Four four months ago. Four months ago was <laughs> December eighteenth. Was my was my very last yeah. final oral exam that I passed. So now and, I'm a doctor. So you now have to, uh, the business case for your life would be that you now have to earn really a, a lot of money to, um, yeah, to compensate for, for the, the years before. Have you, have you, depends, you depends on what you, what you want for your retirement, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and how's the process now to make money in Germany? Do, are you, are you dependent on not a director, but the boss, or can you just open your own, um, place and and be a doctor how can you how can you make, make money then mm, there's there's lots of ways to make money the, the interesting thing about medicine about the field of medicine is that there's something for everybody in there mm -hmm. you like to cut people open you can do that if you want to mm -hmm. study ethics of medicine you can do that so you can either have an office job or be in the hospital like 24 7 mm. whatever you like um you can do consulting work mm -hmm. uh, at, um, at firms, for example, or you can work for the, the health insurance companies or like I do right now for the, for the Gesundheitsamt, for the health office who's fighting the pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. That's uh, totally an office job where I'm doing home office right now, which is totally mm -hmm. nice and totally <laughs> an improvement um, to yeah. my life quality. Um, or I could just be self-employed, mm -hmm. be a private doctor and have people pay me for whatever health work they need. And, and how much could you make now? Uh, so what do you like to do and, and how much could you make that now in the near future and maybe also in, in five years? Um, as an, as a resident, you start with a salary of about... 4,500 uh, before tax for mm -hmm. a 40-hour work week. And uh, that increases like every year uh, for, uh, on, on, with. <laughs> on what? Uh, it increases. Okay, the salary it, increases every year. It becomes more, 150 euros more every year. And 150 then for, uh, euros? Wait a second. 150 euros more or more than that? Is it that's not much? It increases off on 150 euros. Okay. It becomes more like, and then then when you're finally done and you're you 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 have your specialty, you're earning like five thousand five hundred euros or so. Okay. And then you have to become the the chief or the chief's chief or whatever if you if you want to do that, hmm. and uh, if you open your own practice mm -hmm. depends on what specialty you do how, how thoroughly you treat your patients you can treat a patient for seven minutes or you can take your time and treat him for half an hour and get the same money <laughs> okay or you only work for um people who are not in the public health care uh, insurance if you want to yeah if you or want to yeah you decide for yourself you can you can do a lot you have a lot of choices But that's at least uh, better. I mean, it's not a, a high earning like IT freelancer salary. So the 1.5K, but at least it's a, it's a lot or more than most people earn, I think. 1.5K? You, you, you mentioned like that as a resident, you, you get the 4.5K, 4,500. Uh -huh. And then later on, 5,500. That's it, yeah. Okay. And then as a chief, how, how much? We get then depends on the hospital. Depends okay, on okay, okay. You don't, uh, but it's a hospital, or if it's a private firm, mm. or if it's uh, from the state, or. But or you cannot be. It's not that you that you're going to be rich uh, as a, as a doctor. That depends on what you do. <laughs> ah, so okay, you can you have your own pre uh, practice or your own uh, place where you um, cure people, but you can also employ other doctors, and then you make can can make some more money. True. So you can make out of a business oh, okay. because I know. You think is a lot of money. <laughs> uh, let's say, let's say, how can you make as a doctor more than 
7,000 uh, K. 7,000 a month. A month, yeah. Um, you become the Oberarzt. <laughs> you, become, you become the, the chief Oberarzt. doctor, the basically. Chief. Or you can also do some teaching or you can mm -hmm. also do scientific work. Mm -hmm. um, you can have your side hustle as a doctor too. Or you can write a book, which I did too, which will <laughs> increase my income, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah, so you can have also have a side hustle as, as a doctor. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that could also um, help. And what uh, what do you want to do? Because I read on your on your blog is that you want to become a psychiatrist, true? Psychiatrist, yeah psychiatrist yeah. and um why I, i mean that's really hard i think um to uh, be uh, exposed to people who are mentally not healthy mm -hmm. is it some childhood dream or what makes you uh choose this direction i found out i was good at it <laughs> I, you're good at it yeah <laughs> okay. i did an internship at mm -hmm. a psychi psychiatric hospital because yeah. i wanted to learn more about addiction really because my mm -hmm. focus is on food addiction and that's why people cannot change their diet um and when i was there i i noticed i was good at it i i'm the empathetic type i can understand their problems i'm i'm i think that's because of the acting mm -hmm. um beforehand that i had to think about myself about other people about the characters i was portraying why are they doing what they are doing mm -hmm. and um the patients at the psychiatric hospital they felt they felt good <laughs> so then so you, you basically did a test and then and then you found out that that it works out and it could be also you have a feeling that you you have an impact and you do um that you have You contribute to other people's life, basically. That's what Araminta always said, like career testing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> During your med school, you, yeah. you test specialties that mm -hmm. you might like mm -hmm. and uh, or you might not like. And that's that's what I like because I was good at it. I was successful. I felt good about myself I, much more than about pharmacology mm -hmm. or surgery or other fields where I, I feel it feels like a struggle to me. Okay. That was easy. Okay. Um, but the other, I mean, the surgery is also, can also be useful sometimes. It can be useful, but if you want to have nice people around you, you should not go into surgery. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, how could, I mean, how could you um, maybe have had a different life path If, for example, in your your childhood uh, was a little different, so what could led to what could have led to a different life um, path for for you? So maybe just not doing the school, finishing the school immediately, um, being seen, maybe being seen in the first place in, in your childhood, so you, that you don't have to be an actor. Um, is could you imagine that that it also Could have been different. If it if it had been different, I would probably lead this the life my sister is leading. <laughs> ah, okay. Because <laughs> she married her for, first boyfriend, mm -hmm. and they uh, he got uh, he, his parents are both teachers, and they gave him a lot of money, and they taught him a lot of money, and they helped him buy the first apartment in Hanover. They mm -hmm. moved in together, then they traded the apartment for a house, sold the apartment, cool. bought a house. Mm -hmm. He is um, uh, working for the state, <laughs> and uh, it's now it's perfect. Too. It's all perfect. And they, right. then they had a child, <laughs> but and they don't have a cat. You have a cat. My sister's allergic to cats. Ah, you see. <laughs> I have a cat. Yeah, <laughs> but um, I, my cat is the substitute for for all of that. So. <laughs> And now I also have uh, heard uh, from my wife that you um, becoming a mother soon now with 45, that you becoming mother and you, yeah. uh, because you mentioned it on YouTube, that's why I can ask. Yeah. Um, and uh, how, how are you doing that? Um, I, I'm not too old, you know? I am. <laughs> I, okay. I tried it uh, the natural way for five years. Mm. I had a, um, a miscarriage um, when mm. I was pregnant for mm. five years ago. Yeah. And afterwards, it never worked out the natural way. So then I went to Prague mm -hmm. to a um, facility where I got an egg donation. Yeah. 
It's a big topic, this um, getting a child uh, when you maybe missed the point or when you cannot get them. So I know a lot of people who are uh, trying to yeah, become parents or father and so yeah. on. Um, and is, is it easier in, in Spain or in, in East Europe? Because it I heard depends on how much money you want to spend. <laughs> so okay. so um, uh, Czechoslovakia is pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. You can also do it in Hungary. Mm -hmm. Spain is pretty expensive. Uh, you can also go to Denmark. Interesting. Oh. That's, a, that's a whole new world for me. Um, cool. Um, and um, how um, did you learn about uh, money? Because I think in, 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 the, in the beginning of your life, you were not having not been focused a lot on money. When did you recognize that it's an important topic? Um, I got fired from a job at a health food store mm -hmm. like four years ago, I think, for refusing to sell, to, to actively sell non-vegan um, meat, non-vegan, so real meat, <laughs> mm -hmm. to, to offer meat to the customer around Christmas um at the cashier i didn't want to do that and then they fired me <laughs> and uh then i had to to think about what i could do about mm -hmm. money if my bafög would be enough and mm -hmm. the, the money i earn online and so i went for four uh, months i think <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. with deliberate poverty that was a term that i found on the internet on youtube with a girl that um did that like which is basically frugalism mm -hmm. deliberate poverty like seeing on how little you can live and still survive um i did that for four months and then i found myself another job but i was <laughs> on youtube on that money topic yeah. and then i found the a girl on youtube her, she calls herself budget girl mm -hmm. and she introduced myself to dave ramsey mm -hmm. and From Dave Ramsey, I found out about the baby steps and the, the emergency funds and stuff like that. And also about mutual funds. And during the same time, somebody introduced to me the concept of early right retirement extreme. Yeah. Van Fisker. And that happened kind of around the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's when I really got into the money topic. And that was what year? Was it uh, 2017, 16? 17, yeah. I think it was 17 and 2018 mm. I started investing in the stock market. Really? And and uh, ET the ETF uh, passed basically? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not into all the numbers. So, uh, so just a uh, savings plan every month, a certain yeah. amount. Okay. Yeah, cool. But it's, uh, it's good to start. What would you, if you, you as you become a mother, hopefully, mm -hmm. and what would you teach your kids um, then later on that they um, have a good start um, with their financial knowledge? Regarding money, mm -hmm. well, I plan on investing in an all-world Vanguard uh, mm -hmm. fund and to, to use the dividend as the pocket money for the child. Ah, ah okay. <laughs> to get the child uh, knowing about the stock market, that it is there and that it can produce money for them if you keep it in there. Okay. And something... Uh, somebody That's a nice idea, actually, that you... Yeah. That you um, so in the first, you you deploy some money and you pay the um, the Taschengeld, so the, the money for the um, child every week. Uh, you pay it from the dividends. That's, exactly, that's the plan. Okay, but then then you need uh, you don't need a lot of money because children don't need to get a lot of money <laughs> in well, the beginning. Let's see, <laughs> let's see how good how well the fund is doing. Yeah. Um, well, you you get the the child money from the from the estate, like two hundred nineteen mm -hmm. euros, and yeah. I figured that a hundred euros a month that go into a Vanguard All World fund will then generate the dividends, and then we'll see how much it is when she's like four. <laughs> <laughs> Must just be totally rich, and um, yeah, that's a nice idea. I think. Um... Weeks with that. Cool. And um, so I also watched a video about the financial independence. You actually have a health channel, but you also did one video about financial independence. And d mm. do you do you remember what you said there? That it is stupid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, basically, you said it's stupid. Uh, financial independence is stupid, cannot work, and you want to do something different. Uh, do you still have the same uh, 
uh, opinion? I still follow the financial independence movement mm. because they have like the best ideas for improving your life, basically. Yeah. Yeah, but, it's not only about money in, in the financial independence scene. It's also much, much more also about the other topics, not only investing. Yeah. and uh, But the other thing is that um, work is not only money. Work is also education and meeting like-minded people mm -hmm. and uh, meeting people and uh, improving yourself and that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I don't want to miss that. So I, I do want to go to work, but I do, yeah. don't want to work 40 hours. And I think what's missing basically in the financial independence movement is you, you have to have two questions, mm -hmm. <laughs> two different questions, and you need to find the answer to that. And then you need to mix those up, which is what would I do now if I was retired? And mm -hmm. the other is what would I do now if I could never retire? Yeah, yeah. You need to find a profession that, you like doing that gives you some money mm -hmm. that you don't that that still uh, keeps your work life balance mm -hmm. um, upright and uh, so in the end you you, you in the end you don't want to stop working but you want to um, have influence on the conditions in in which you uh, work and you want to find the the work that you could do forever basically so yeah. that makes you kind of yeah. satisfied. And uh, don't you also think that um, that you cannot just stop working because you want also there's a natural feeling of the humans, I would say, that you also want to com contribute something to society. And if you just live off your dividends and uh, watch TV or ma making a garden, um, then you're not really contributing something to society. You're not really taking a little bit of responsibility. Um, I think that could also... So I decided for myself that I would also miss that somehow, not to contribute and to uh, yeah be a little bit responsible for some project or some business or anything. I don't know. I I don't <laughs> think that I have to. Have, I'm not not that much driven by mm -hmm. giving back, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Perfect. <laughs> but, but there's the, yeah. the, in America. They have the physicians on fire. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. group and movement and physicians they are like a high income group they can mm -hmm. do that like save a lot of money and then retire early but they also they define themselves about being a physician like yeah what i do that is what i am yeah um and of course also there's the I, there's i put so much work into becoming a doctor mm -hmm. i cannot just give it up to sit on the beach with a caipirinha or whatever um it's okay for I, a couple of weeks i think exactly but but also after i finished my studies mm -hmm. uh, and then started working that was five weeks of not having anything to do mm -hmm. i was bored that was terrible <laughs> <laughs> i think for me also three weeks so after three weeks of vacation i i, I need to start yeah. doing something again and uh, i think we also need to um finish now and uh, what what would your be your number one tip for somebody who got stuck in the career who maybe has has chosen the wrong path and would like to uh, get a new into a new direction? What would be your number one tip? Think about what you want, what you really really want. What could make you happy, and then pursue that. If you find out it doesn't make you happy, pursue something else. Pivot and do, <laughs> do something else. It. Uh, we we have this the reward center in our brain is basically mm -hmm. a compass that tells us where to go yeah if the the imagination of doing something delights you go for it if it distracts what's the word distracts <laughs> disgusts you disgusts if it disgusts you, you yeah. go in the other direction like that find out what you really really want what's what's it that sometimes you need to be like, you need to be brave and also take take a risk for that because um, always changing the direction feels it feels a bit risky sometimes as you also not earning much maybe in the beginning and so on but it's much riskier not to do that i guess exactly exactly in, mm -hmm. in my situation it was like okay um there's no other way there is no other way i could keep on doing this which i mm -hmm. don't want or be brave cool like and what would be, as we now finish, but you're a health influencer, I would say, 
Uh, what would be your number one or two tip uh, to to not get cancer? <laughs> Keep your work life balance upright. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Stress. Okay. And eat a low fat vegan diet, whole food, plant based diet. Don't smoke. <laughs> no, no, there's no not just one tip. Okay, there's not. So if if people want to find out about uh, more tips, uh, they can uh, follow you on uh, YouTube, Silke Rosenbusch's channel. I will also link it in the show note. And it's in German, unfortunately, but they can Google Translate also the content or just read out to you um, on Instagram and yeah, yeah get in contact. Okay. And they can buy my book, which came out in February. <laughs> <laughs> and they can buy your book. It's also in German. It's also in German. What's the name? Uh, raus aus der Esslustfalle. Uh, out, pleasure uh, trap. out of the food uh, Okay, get out of the food pleasure trap. Um, okay, so I will get uh, some ice cream and we uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we, we will uh, thank you for the interview. Um, Silke, it was nice to see you and uh, yeah. Bye Thanks bye. for having me.